Hello there, everybody, and welcome to 10 Tips and Tricks for Weapons and Jack the Lines 3. In this video, I summarize all the things that are helpful to know about weapons. Different categories of weapons, modding, ammunition, creation, and ammo types, and all the things in between. I really did my best to cover as many different parts of this topic as possible, and I hope that by the end of this video you will have a nice understanding of what weapon to pick under which circumstances. Now then, let's get started with a very generalistic thing at number one. I want you to scrap whatever weapons you don't need. There are way, way more weapons in the game than you could possibly carry around with you. And while it is totally okay to have a spare gun that, for example, uses a different ammo type or, or is differently modded or whatever, you don't need to conserve the bajillions AK-47 or whatever, rather transform them into parts, that's the currency of modifications in this game, and that's where they are way more useful and they don't cram uh, any spots in your inventory. Number two, I want to talk about weapon quality and jamming weapons and unjamming weapons. So. As a rule of thumb, if the quality of your gun goes below 80%, repair it, because the lower the quality, the higher the chances of the weapon jamming while you're trying to fire it. And a jammed weapon sucks. It costs all the action points that the shot would have required, and the shot doesn't go off, and the weapon is jammed and unusable afterwards. That's really not cool. Therefore, if ever one of your weapons jams, put it into the hands of a skilled mechanic, for unjamming purposes, because a unskilled mechanic will damage the weapon in the unjamming process, if it works. So you can really ruin your weapon if you have to unjam a weapon with a untalented person. So ideally, have a secondary handgun or something in the case that your main gun might jam. That really, really makes you a lot more effective or store something in the backpack for a really bad situation. That being said, well, let's get on over to number three, and now we're going to talk about weapons and weapon types a little bit more. So here I want to talk about close range weapons and why they are good at what they're doing and what you can pick there. First off, handguns. Handguns are amazing for close range combat. They have low action point costs per shot and they have a decently, uh, decently high damage per shot and they have a good accuracy when you're on a low distance. That makes them very, very effective when you're standing in the face of the enemy. Melee weapons follow a similar pattern. They have a very low attack cost and a high accuracy in comparison to ranged weapons, and therefore they're really powerful when you're getting close into the face of the enemy. Shotguns are the third option that you can go for in close range combat. Their specialty lies in the AOE capabilities. Pistols and melee weapons usually don't do any AOE damage, whereas a shotgun, if you stand right, you can totally hit several enemies at once, and shotguns have a high tendency to make the enemy bleed and it exposes them, so really cool for close range combat. A honorable mention for the close range combat goes to the submachine guns. They live between the low range combat and the mid range combat. And since we're now getting into number four, mid range combat, I want to talk about the SMG category first because, you know, it fits in very really well. So these guys here have the ability to be quite good in close range and also effective in medium range. The submachine gun has as a downside a Bit of a lower damage output compared to the handguns. Handguns usually pack quite a heavy punch per shot and these don't. As a benefit there you get to shoot over wider distances and in close range while the single bullet of an SMG might not hurt much you can go into burst fire or auto fire and also you got run and gun as an opportunity to just uh, move and shoot. The uh, pistols have mobile shot, so that's also a unique trademark move of these babies here. The other option for the medium range combat and the mostly used one is various types of assault rifles. Assault rifles are very similar to the SMG 
but they have a higher range on average than the SMG and a higher damage per bullet on average. They use various types of ammo and assault rifles are truly the generalists of the uh, weapon types. They are pretty good at everything but not excellent at anything except for bursting out big amounts of bullets at once. That's, But even their heavy weapons uh, are better than that. Assault rifles are, nevertheless, really, really useful to have as a secondary weapon on everybody. They are excellent for overwatch fire, they have a decent accuracy, a decent damage, and if you don't know what secondary weapon to pick, usually an assault rifle is never a bad pick to go, because you can do many, many different jobs with it. But I personally must say, I feel like Assault Rifles are really, really the uh, Jack of All Trades and uh, Master of None weapon here in the game. That being said, let's head on over to number 5, Long Range Combat. So, Sniper Guns are the only real long range weapons we got here. And, um, sadly I don't have one here currently. But you notice them like the Rifle 98 and other um, Assault not assault, sniper rifle brines. They have a low clip size, they have a high action point cost, but a very, very high damage per bullet, and therefore they are excellent for stealth kills and also for higher ground attacks. So if you want to put somebody with long range weaponry into effective use, try to give them a point in the combat scenery where they can just... Uh, for example, stand above the enemy, lying prone and stuff like that is really important for long-range commentary. Apart from that, the game offers you heavy weapons as sort of a long-range weapon and explosives. But explosives are the next point on the list, so I really don't have to say that much more about long-range weapons except for that they are heavy, bulky and hard-hitting. And the most important part about heavy these weapons is that you have a decent marksmanship and a, and a good um, point where to shoot from and modifications but modifications are also a thing I'm going to talk about in this video. So next point on the list like I already uh, mentioned explosives. Explosives are a very very vital and important part of the game. Explosives can be either thrown or you can also shoot explosives for example the AK-47 can be modified with a grenade launcher if I remember correctly or well some of the weapons are actually are definitely capable of getting that mounted I just don't find it currently ah here so here a grenade launcher launcher can be mounted don't use explosives ever without an explosive skill period you know when you want to shoot explosives you need that mishap chance is your biggest enemy and it's really important that you keep that as low as possible that being said, explosives are the kings of area of damage, uh, area of effect damage. There's probably nothing better for that department. And another thing, they can blow up covers. So if somebody is standing somewhere in cover and it's just something that looks destroyable, explosives are a way to go to prepare the fire for everybody else and dish out a decent amount of damage. As a bonus, explosives are really powerful against armored targets in general, and I really like to use explosives also to blow up boss enemies in this game, because they have a decent amount of damage and a high accuracy, because if your explosives uh, dude is good at that skill and has a decently high strength skill, you can hit amazingly far. Now then, let's head on over to number 7, I want to talk about heavy weapons. So heavy weapons are mostly machine guns, and the downside of these is that you need to set up fire. Machine guns and heavy guns are nevertheless the real kings of the Overwatch game. They spit out more bullets per action point than any other weapon, they have a horribly high damage on this at the same moment, and they have a stupidly high range, and uh, they can also really cover a wide area. The downside of these, if you are in specialized perk-wise, they hinder your movement, and they need preparation to be fired properly. There's a couple of mercenaries out there that you can pick up. For example, Grizzly can just fire machine guns out of the hip. 
without the necessary setup. So if you want to use heavy weapons, I strongly recommend you to specialize mercenary in the use of these. And I just want to repeat that machine guns are amazing when it comes down to Overwatch fire. I think there's nothing stronger in the game in terms of Overwatch damage dealing, but prove me wrong in the comment section. You're my guest and I'm always happy to learn something new. So that being said, let's head on over to number eight. I want to talk about modifications on your guns. So interestingly enough, you can do that everywhere except in the turn-based combat. That's when you cannot modify your guns, but apart from that, you can always do it. So the first thing I want to talk about, suppressors. Suppressors are amazing and they should be one of the first things that you mount on your guns if you like stealth gameplay. If you don't care about stealthing, the Compensator is also really, really good because every automatic weapon loves this thing. And it's the alternative if you don't want to go for a stealthy gameplay with that specific gun. That being said, I want to talk about one thing. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Whenever you're modifying something, save your game and be prepared to reload, especially when you're trying for things that have a hard difficulty. Sometimes you just have to retry it several times and sometimes you even d damage the gun. I don't know, I don't like it too much and I'm a, per I'm a consistent uh, safe scummer in that department. If you like random uh, fails and wasted parts, yeah well, or you're playing Iron Man because um, you're an admirable masochist, that being said, since the failure chance, even with a decently high mechanical skill over 90, is pretty high, I really highly recommend you to save the game before modifying your guns. Okay, back to business. So, stock modifications are always amazing. They have sometimes downsides, most of the time the um, benefits outweigh it, but whatever stock modification you do, it's always a difficult modif- uh, a hard difficulty modification and therefore I do them as the very last thing on my gun. Magazine modifications are always cool, they do come in two flavors, expanded clip sizes or expanded reliability or action point manipulations. Oh, well it's actually three flavors but Magazines, I love to increase the clip size, but sometimes you can also increase the reliability or quicker reloads. This depends on your playstyle, but a larger magazine never, never hurts. The handguard, if it's available, is a really powerful upgrade because it makes aiming so much more effective and cheap. I love that. If you can, bipods are very costly. They are among the most costly modifications, hard to mount. But, well, they are powerful. It's a large accuracy bonus when prone. And if you have a dedicated sniper on your team, you should really try to give that sniper gun that little modification. And whenever you can go into prone firing, it pays off massively. The, well, marking devices. I, all, I, I want to point out that for one, you can make the enemy um, easier to hit, but all of these come with a downside that they also illuminate the wheel for a few exceptions. So that means I do not recommend these if you want to play stealthy, but altogether, well, I don't know how to think about these in all honesty. It makes it a little bit easier to spot, but they are most of the time more important other uh, other modifications so I I delay them so that's that's on a personally verdict a little bit and grenade launchers they are well, I've been already talking about these if you can afford them and you can use them they are really really good so we need to go for a different weapon now to see the rest of the modifications that I want to talk about not every gun type is eligible for all the modifications so scopes, I wanted to talk about scopes. Scopes are so stupidly powerful and therefore they cost extra components. I want to point out the sniper scope here as my personal favorite because the increased accuracy bonus from aiming, you really notice that terribly. It's a very, very high um, payoff for this modification and I can strongly recommend it. If you cannot afford a lens, 
a improved iron sight is the poor man's scope really pays off as well i personally love all modifications that give you a a courtesy bonus or any bonus without any downsides and that's a cheap way to go but uh in all seriousness when you have lenses scopes pay off massively prism scopes or um yeah well prism scopes come all with a condition behind their bonus i don't play them uh, i don't like to play them that much and the thermal scope oh boy this is a luxury thing so I really, really recommend you to build this if you can. It is, uh, it's the king of the scopes. But if you cannot bring in a chip, go for a sniper scope. This is personally for me the best um, cost efficiency uh, point in the in the um, roster. I just uh, want to give the wider Overwatch cone scopes here also a um, honorable mention. They can be extremely good for assault rifles because I already mentioned they are good at overwatch fire and that this is a really good alternative if you don't want to go for the um, aiming modifications. So last but not least I want to talk about barrel modifications. Many guns come with barrel modifications and these always require steel pipes. And they are always stupidly powerful. They allow you to adapt the uh, gun gun's behavior to your playstyle, either reducing the range and increasing other stats, or increasing increasing the accuracy and the range in general. Barrel modifications are really really good. I totally recommend them. So to give you a out uh, a, a, a ending word about modifications, only mod guns that you really really want to use and mod them to their full extent because you know even if you are going to replace the gun one day these modifications make such a high impact in terms of effectiveness of the gun that if you have too many parts and you don't know what to use them on look over your guns and modify them good -o. that was enough about that topic let's head on over to number nine ammo conservation so ammo the longer your campaign goes will eventually play a role if you haven't uh, paid attention to a few things so every gun uses a certain type of ammo as you see here in the uh, preview i highly recommend you to try to mix as many ammo types in your roster as possible because here for example my campaign i was very new on this one but the save file was good for the demonstration I have used way too many 7.62 millimeter gun um, um, guns, and now I'm at the point where my assault rifle ammo is low. So the best way to counteract on that is to check out what kind of uh, what kind of ammo your guns use. And for example, if you want to use a lot of assault rifles on your team, every assault rifle that uses a different type of ammo, like the Famas here. Is a nice addition so basically try to use as many different ammo types as possible in your loadout this helps you to avoid bottlenecks on certain um, ammo types and last but not least I gotta say certain ammo types are just rarer than others especially explosives are among the rarest um, things and if you are unhappy with that you can loot gunpowder at various locations in the game and if you find a repair shop, you can craft yourself ammo to, of your own liking at that point. So, that being said, the more different ammo types you use, the less problems you will have at the end of the day with the ammo for your entire roster. That's why it pays off to mix so many, uh, as many different weapon types into your roster as possible. Here in this video squad, I didn't do a, a pretty good job. By now, I try to do better than that. Good old. Number 10, I want to talk as a last thing about ammo types because there's a few of these and it's quite easily summed up. There's standard ammo without any modifications, duh. Then there's armor piercing, that's pretty straightforward. I like this ammo for boss enemies that are heavily armored. Apart from that, I'd recommend you to use them only for targets that you have a hard time killing. That's what they're good for. Apart from that, don't waste these. They are also quite rare. Match ammo is increased uh, aiming bonus. This is, well, 
I like this kind of ammo if I am in encounters where I am against, where I'm outnumbered. Simply because when I'm outnumbered, I want every bullet to hit. And this is where this ammo can help you out best. Apart from that, well, it's obviously a good ammo for sniper jobs, but I felt like the best occasion to use these is when you're brutally outnumbered because you want to hit, to, to get the most out of every bullet. That's where match ammo is, in my opinion, quite useful. And hollow point armor, high crit chance and bleeding. This is extremely effective against enemies that boast with high HP numbers. Especially enemy melee troops uh, happen to have that quite often. And again, boss enemies also. Hollow point ammo is again very rare, even rarer than armor piercing armor in general, or at least that has been my impression. And it's the best stuff for enemies that have a high amount of HP, but not too much armor. This ammo sucks against armored targets. Armored targets, that's armor piercing ammo for. And I haven't found any uh, other ammo types in larger amounts, so if I have missed something, let me know in the comments. And that's been that. I thank you for watching this video. Drop me your comments, questions, add-ons to this, uh, or corrections if I had something wrong there. I really do try my best, but uh, nobody is free from mistakes. Thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, would be wildly appreciated. Same goes for a subscription to the channel. I bring out everyday new stuff for you, and having you would be a real pleasure for me. That being said, there's a playlist link down there to all the other Jack the Lines 3 info videos I did. And last but not least, I hope you have a great day and you're enjoying your time. And see you next time. Bye-bye.